Hello, everybody, and welcome to question and answer time. Uh, if you've been following us for a while, you'll notice that we have a bit of a different background. That's because we are answering this question, not in the United States, but all the way on the other side of the world in a country called Croatia, where Danielle and I, as, as well as uh, different volunteer leaders and gospel on the go ministries and various different missions teams. Uh, we've been spending the last, uh, feels like forever, <laughs> but last maybe month, month and a half here in Croatia serving the Roma Gypsy people. Uh, but uh, we wanted to uh, continue to answer your questions that you're sending in. So uh, even though there's no air conditioning right now <laughs> in this area and it is excruciatingly hot outside, I will not complain because I am going to think nothing but positive thoughts. And I know that my positive thoughts are going to create a positive reality, right? Wrong. In fact, that's our question today. Can my positive thoughts bring about or even create a positive reality for me. Well, let's see. I'm going to think snow, snow, snow. No snow. <laughs> and trust me, I could use some snow right now, right? No, that's, uh, look, that is false teaching, okay? That your positive thoughts can create your own positive reality. In fact, uh, one of the movements uh, in Christendom today is called the Word of Faith movement uh, that teaches that, that basically says is you, if you, you just need to keep all negative thoughts, all negative words away from you, right? And so you never say to yourself, oh, I have a headache or oh, I have a backache. No, that's a negative thought. And they say that's creating your negative reality. Instead, they say, no, head you're clear, head you're fine, head you are healthy, and therefore they say you'll not have a headache. Same with your back. Back you're okay, disc you're, in, you're, 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 you're strong, don't worry about it, sciatic nerve, you're not, you're not uh, 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 creating agony for me, and they say those positive thoughts will create a positive reality. Well, first of all, <laughs> We're not the creators of reality, right? Who's the creator? Who's the one and only creator? God, right? And so, just with that question, can our positive thoughts create a positive reality? Well, create? We can't create anything. There is only one creator, the triune God. And therefore, just that question and that false teaching, well, it's idolatry because what it says is that, that you have the same creative power that God has. And didn't God say something? I don't know, the Ten Commandments? Uh, let's see which one. Oh, the first commandment, you shall have no other God before or beside me. Well, by saying that we, through our thoughts, even our words, can create our own reality we're putting ourselves right next to God. Hey, that's idolatry. That's blasphemy. And so the answer to this question is no. Our thoughts, no matter how positive they are. Okay, again, let me try it. Um, let's, let's not try snow. Okay, um, air conditioning. I... Come on, air conditioning. I love you, air conditioning. Air conditioning, you are so comfortable. You are so joyous. Air conditioning, I love you. I need you. Dayon, are you feeling any air conditioning right now? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, Dayon, that's because you had some negative thoughts when I was, when I was, is that what it was? <laughs> okay. Look, am I being a bit flippant with this? Yeah. 
because this is such a joke. Actually, I should say this. This would be so incredibly funny, this false teaching, if it were not a, tr a, a, a teaching that's out there that's misleading so many people. So on the one hand, yeah, it is a joke. My thoughts, my words, no matter how positive they are, are not going to create my reality. It's a joke. But on the other hand, it's not a joke because it's blaspheming God's holy name. And it's also misleading a mass of people. Well, Andrew, wait a second. Don't get so, don't get so dogmatic, Andrew. What about Philippians chapter 4? Okay, I know what you're referring to. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. I was already there. I anticipated this question. Um, the, the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Sounds like he's talking about, hey, positive thoughts, positive thoughts. You're going to create your positive reality. And they use these verses here. And Paul says, finally, brethren, whatever's true, whatever's honorable, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's of good repute, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, dwell or think on these things, right? So Paul here is saying, Think of that as positive. Think of that which is honorable, pure, uh, of good repute, of excellence, worthy of praise. Think, think, think of those things. Paul says, here's the result, verse 9. These things which you've learned, received, and heard from me, put into practice, and the God of peace, here's the result. The God of peace will be with you. In other words, think positive thoughts. And God and his peace will be with you, and you're going to attract blessings to you well you never take a verse or a few verses and make doctrine on them you need to understand the overall context who wrote this letter to the philippians the apostle paul did he say that you are to think positive thoughts or or, or that you are to think on that which is holy pure and lovely absolutely and did Paul say that God of peace will be with you and God's peace will be upon you? Yes, he said that. But do you guys know where Paul was when he wrote this? Mm, Roman imprisonment, house arrest. Hmm. Doesn't sound like some positive things were coming Paul's way. Um, do you know when Paul went to Philippi on his second missionary journey to plant this church? Um, do you know what happened to Paul there in Philippi? Let's see, he was emotionally and physically abused. He was beaten. He was thrown into prison, put in the stocks where he was down in this little area where his legs were spread so wide. There in the stocks, he couldn't stand up. That, can you imagine the pain and agony he was dealing with? This is the same Paul's writing to the Philippians. He's in prison now. First time he came to them, he had been brutally mistreated by people there in Philippi. Praise God, a church was planted there. Fast forward, now he's in prison writing to the Philippians. And Paul says, you know, think on that which is pure, lovely, and the God of peace will be on you. Is Paul saying, think positive things, you can create your positive reality? That's not what he's saying, because if that's what he was saying, why wouldn't he have just thought positive things and created his own positive reality? Like, boom, I'm out of jail. Paul wasn't teaching that false teaching. In fact, same letter to the same Philippians while Paul was in prison, chapter 1. Look what he says to the Philippians, verse 29. For to you it has been granted or gifted for Christ's sake. Not only to believe in him, ready, but also to suffer for his sake. <laughs> it's been graced to you, Christian, to believe in Christ, right? It's a gift to be able to have the faith to be able to repent of your sins and place your faith and trust in, in Christ alone for salvation. So that's been given to, uh, given to you as a gift. You know what else has been given to you as a gift, Christian? Not to think positive thoughts so you can create your positive reality. 
No, it's also been granted to you to suffer for the name of Christ, like Paul was. So what did Paul mean back in chapter 4 when he said, think about it. He's talking about put your mind in God's truth. And the result is the God of peace will be with you. So that no matter what you're going through, no matter what your reality is, whether it looks positive to you or even negative to you, God in his grace will give you the strength to be able to suffer for his name and bring glory to his name. Do we believe that we should think positively? Yeah. But not to sit there and hype yourself up and say, I am wonderful, I am great, I am handsome, I am pretty. No. You want to think on something, dwell on something? You dwell on God's truth because that is pure, that is honorable, that is lovely, that is perfect, that is holy. And as you do this, no matter what your reality is around you, God's peace that surpasses all understanding will grant you what you need so that your life can bring glory to God. Amen.